So many of you all know that my reading goal for how many books I want to read in a year is 150 books. I've only ever hit it once, which was last year, but once you did it once, it's kind of like, well, <laughs> I could do it again, you know? So I thought, let's see how I'm doing, because I set my Goodreads reading goal to 100, because I like positive affirmation. I like it telling me I'm ahead of schedule, but I knew I didn't read a ton in July. I knew I'd be probably a little bit behind. So we're 65% on the day I'm filming this, of the way through 2024. 65% of 150 books is 97 books. I should have read 97 books by this point in the year to be on track for 150. I've read 85. I've read 85 books, <laughs> so I'm 12 books behind schedule. That threw me right back into the throes of PTSD. And you know, if I was like five books behind schedule, I'd be like, eh, you know, like I tend to read more in the last couple months of the year, so I'm not too worried. 12? 12 books? 12 books? That sounds like quite a lot. 12 books sounds like quite a lot. So this week we're doing a vlog to try and help me catch up a little bit and make a bit of reading progress. Lux is also here. Look how... <laughs> Sleeping with the dogs they sleep with and Tom's not here. Look at him, he's so happy. So this week I've decided to do another of my seven books in seven days vlogs, but I'm gonna make it a little bit easy for myself and I'm gonna be reading the seven shortest books on my TBR. So we're gonna get through a little book every day. It's gonna feel pretty easy to do, but I think we're gonna have fun while reading it. Actually, when I was like finding out what the books were for this video, I don't think I keep short books on my TBR a lot because I read them quickly because I'm like, oh yeah, it's gonna be so easy. So I can't get over his face. Isn't it so funny, his face just being over my shoulder? Anyways, so yeah, we're gonna be reading the seven shortest books on my TBR. So let me run you through them quickly. Let's run through them from the longest to the absolute shortest on my TBR. So coming in at number seven with 205 pages, we have got The Silver Sword by Ian Sorelier. I don't know much about this. Either this was gifted to me like on a whim by one of you guys or it was recommended to me by one of you and I was like, okay, I'll read it. I think it's set during World War II and it's about these children during World War II, I think trying to find their father. I think this is like a children's classic, you know? And I'm excited to see what I think of it. Next we have Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak coming in at 189 pages. This is one that I've wanted to read for so long. This was one of the ones in Wrapped Up Retro. So it's one of the oldest books on my TBR and it's pretty much time I get to it. It's semi-autobiographical about a young indigenous girl who becomes pregnant in the 1970s and I know that it's told in a very unique way. So many people have told me to get the audiobook. I can't find it anywhere in the UK for the life of me, which is upsetting me. So I have to go and try and find that. I'm still really, really excited to read it. I still think it'll be a wonderful read. I just heard the author narrates the audiobook and I've heard wonderful things, but that's another one. Then we have the start in a series, <laughs> but it's okay because you're in the second book already. We have the the Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older. This has 166 pages and this is the start of like a sci-fi murder mystery series with a sapphic romance in it. It's set in Jupiter. I think it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited to start this. I know Mara really likes this series, so I'm really looking forward to getting to it. It's published by Tor. I love reading stuff from Tor. Tor's one of my favorite publishers for all the kind of, you know, experimental, imaginative stuff they do and the novellas they publish. So really excited to get to that one. Next we have our only graphic novel, because although graphic novels are quick to read, they're not technically usually short you know? But our next one is Progress in a series. We have another Progress in a series actually later on. Um, but it is Saga Volume 3. This one is sci-fi and we're following a family and the parents are from like two races who shouldn't be allowed to be together. And I've really enjoyed the first two. This is like a long-term series for me to get through because <laughs> like I didn't read one of these a year pretty much. Oh, that has 144 pages, sorry. And then our next one has 134. We're getting low. Well, guess what people? I get excited about small things. It is Arch Conspirator by Veronica Roth with 134 pages. This one is a Antagony retelling. I have really been enjoying reading what Veronica Roth has been putting out lately in the past couple years. I really enjoyed Post Girl from her. I really enjoyed the Ark short story in the forward collection that she did. I just think the stuff that she's putting out, she's put out another novella I think this year. I just think the stuff she's doing is very interesting and experimental and is obviously an author who's like made enough money for life for the Divergent series that she can kind of experiment and do what she wants to. And I just find these really exciting and I love the sprayed edges on this little edition. Then we have another progress in the series 
pages, we have The Brides of High Hill by Nevo, which is 111 pages. This one is following Cleric Chi again and a young bride. And there's like ghosts, the, the ghosts of the lords, the, the husband's previous wives on the wedding night. I think it sounds so, so good. So cannot wait to dive back into this one. And then the last book is not one I own physically, but it is on my TBR. <laughs> and I'm so excited. I was like, I'm like, I'm so excited to read it. It is Goblins and Great Coats by Travis Bowdry. This is 25 pages. This is like a short story, really. So I think I'll save this probably for the weekend when I'm probably going to be a bit busier. But um, I think this is like a mystery, a locked room mystery with a Goblin Detective written by Travis Bowdry. I cannot wait to read it. I think it'll be probably be five stars. I can't wait to read it. So that is our TBR. In terms of what I want to start today, I'm leaning towards Arch Conspirator or Brides of High Hill. This one I know I'll have the audiobook. This one I won't because I don't want to listen to the audiobook feeds anymore because I know I don't like it as much. Um... Because I don't want to start the video on a series because I like, well, I don't know, these are self-contained stories, so I can, they, it doesn't spoil anything. I can tell you all about this because these books are completely self-contained plots. So actually, I think I'm going to start with The Brides of High Hill. I think it'll be good to make progress in the series, get up to date in the series, good tone to start this off with. And this one's pretty short, it's only 100 pages. So I think I'm going to go ahead and read this one. I'll probably with this vlog just check in with you once I've finished the books because, well, some of the longer ones I might check in halfway. But this is so short that uh, I'm probably just going to go ahead and finish it. So I'll see you later this evening. It's half four now. I've got a few other bits to film and do. So yeah, I'll check on you later once I've finished it. But I'm really excited to try and catch up with my reading goal in this video. Through the blinds Wash away the worries Like a winding tide Yesterday Left far behind Your sweet scent Fills my lungs so Good evening, friends. I have just finished The Brides of High Hill by Nevo. I think I'm gonna give this five stars. What a start! I can't believe it! I wasn't expecting that at all! I cannot believe how much I loved this. I loved this. So I read the, um, where are they? They're here actually. I read the third and fourth in this series earlier this year and I didn't love them. I think I gave them like a 3 and 3.5 or a 3.5 and a 4. I enjoyed them, but didn't love them as much as I had. And someone jogged my memory. They were like, I think you don't love the audiobooks. Well, they, they were saying they didn't love the books as much when they listened to them via audiobook. And I had read both of these via audio. Whereas this one, I just read physically. And let me tell you, you have to read these books physically. I'm a massive proponent of audiobooks. You know, Lady Hardcastle, I'm over here, don't buy the books. <laughs> Let's do audiobooks. But this, oh my God, there's something about Nevo's writing that you just have to read physically and read in your own time. And like certain lines, I think, I think with an audiobook, audiobooks are good for like maybe books where the writing isn't necessarily at the forefront it's more like the characters or the plot or maybe where the beauty of the writing style isn't at the forefront because i think you just have to have these moments where you know, an audiobook is constantly moving right you can't sit back and like ponder necessarily and um there was just certain lines that were like oh my god Oh my god, like what a moment. So the plot of this, like I said, is basically what we know is Cleric Chi is accompanying a young girl as she's going to marry this older lord and there's stuff to do with his wives. And um, yeah, I, I, I just absolutely, I thought it was gonna be a 4.5, but the ending has this kind of twist that I just thought was masterful. But this felt, the atmosphere in this one is absolutely incredible. It has this kind of gothic, haunting atmosphere of this old palace that's kind of falling apart at the seams and just the way like Nevo would describe the lighting in a certain moment or some fish coming up to the top of the water. 
I can't describe to you how beautiful it was. I can't believe I did myself such a disservice in listening to audio audiobooks of these because I think you need to read this physically. You know, this is the fifth in the series, but they're all, you know, kind of standalones. They're all individual vignettes of like a different circumstance where Claire Chi is gathering stories. You know, Claire Chi's whole thing is them um, recording stories. That's what their job is. That's what their role is, is recording stories. But there was something about this one. Oh my God, guys, I loved it. I loved it. I loved the twist. I loved the route it went down. You know, it's hard to talk about because it's 111 pages. I don't want to give anything away, but just the beauty of the writing. I like thought, you know, after I read these, because whenever I talk about this series, I'm like, oh, Nevo's writing is so beautiful. And after I read those, I'm like, have I been chatting shit? Have I been, like, <laughs> in my brain, I was like, have I made this up? <laughs> Do I actually feel like that? Whereas this, this is my favorite in the series so far. It bowled me over. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yep. Yep. Yup. I loved the characters. I love, I don't want to butcher the pronunciation. What was the girl's name? Oh, it's N-H-U-N-G. I don't know. Nung? I don't, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't want to butcher the pronunciation, but I loved her as a character. I loved their relationship. I just loved it. I, guys, I just loved it. I 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 thought it was wonderful. So first book down, I think I'm going to try and tackle one of the longer ones tomorrow. I'm feeling like I'm going to go for the mimicking of known successes. I think I'm going to get the audiobook for this because I think I remember hearing good things about the audiobook for this. And um, yeah, probably read it that way. This one I might check in with you when I'm halfway through. So I'll see you in the morning, but I feel like we've started off with a good omen. Hello friends. I have been busy, busy, busy today. So I'm only just checking in with you now. It's like five o'clock, I think. But I am halfway through the mimicking of known successes. So I want you to check in with you quickly about it. Um, obviously it's really short. So I'm like 80 pages in, 70 pages in. <laughs> but I do have some thoughts. So basically what you need to know about this one. Oh guys, when I tell you the synopsis, you're gonna scream. It's sci-fi set on Jupiter after Earth has become uninhabitable and we're following these two characters and it is a gender swapped Sherlock and Watson retelling but sapphic romance underlying <laughs> toad twiddle and they're trying to solve a murder together. Just take it in, just take it in, just take it in. Take in what we're experiencing. Tell me to me, please. <laughs> Send it to me, Rachel. And I actually did read another novella, gender swapped Sherlock and Watson sci-fi <laughs> retelling at the start of this year called The Tea Master and the Detective. And I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy, I gave it three stars. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Whereas this, this I am really, really enjoying. There's something about the writing and the tone, the humility that this is written. I can't describe it, but I think the we're reading from the perspective of the Watson character and the way that that character views the world, views interactions, views reasoning, views like it, I, I really love the perspective. I love the tone of voice of this and I love the Sherlock character and I love the setup for the mystery. It's basically like I think the whole world is built on platforms and there's like trains that go to everywhere and someone disappeared from a train station. So the suggestion is did he jump off or was he pushed and he worked at the university University that the um, Watson is working at and I'm just loving it. I'm loving the um, Mystery like I said, I'm loving the way these characters are interacting. They have history, right? They have some some kind of like romantic tension underlying everything and I'm loving the way they interact. I don't know if it's quite a five star That'd be pretty crazy to have a five star after just having one, but I am really enjoying it I'm really really enjoying it. I'm glad this is a series. I can't already really can't wait to continue with the series there's this kind of like, I've only read one Sherlock so far. I know I need to read more. I've only read the first, what is the first one called? Study in Scarlet? Is that the one I've read? No. The one where it suddenly goes to Mormons halfway through. I can't remember what one it is. But it's got like a humor that you associate with Sherlock and I'm loving the setting. It's it's really cool, interesting sci-fi. It's, it's interesting because it's a novella, right? And sometimes I struggle with novella sci-fi because I like my sci-fi, I want to imagine it. And sometimes, you know, this is trying to like squeeze a lot in. And so it's world building has to be very subtle, but I feel like 
I'm starting to get there, you know? I'm starting to understand what we're going for. I'm starting to understand kind of some of the rules. Like it's different. Fantasy is like your magic system. This is like, what, where are we? What's the world built up like? And yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it this evening. I've got the audiobook, so I'm probably gonna listen to the audiobook whilst I'm doing some other stuff. But I'll check in with you later this evening. And listen, another book read. I'm feeling pretty good about how this vlog is going so far. I feel like we're reading some really good books. It's a later. I need to start wrapping these up a bit quicker because I'm wrapping them up at like 11 o'clock every night and it's just not good for me. I need to be in bed with like some eye patches on. <laughs> but I have finished The Mimicking of Known Successes and I'm gonna give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. The pros of this, the best parts of it are the world building of this Jupiter land that we've lived on and also the kind of like what happened to Earth and the whole discussions around that and the romance of these two like kind of both socially awkward people and this romance that you're not entirely sure like is it gonna work out because they've broken up once and they had issues then <laughs> and it's all very much left unfinished in this one and like you're rooting for them but you're also like is this what's best for you? How do you know what's good for me? That's my opinion! Not necessarily the mystery. But I'm okay with that. Have I told you what I'm giving this? Have I told you I'm giving it's late? <laughs> Have I told you I'm giving this four stars? I'm giving it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the mystery isn't the pro of it. I mean, the mystery's fine, but it's not what you're reading this for. You're reading it for the world building and for the romance. The mystery, I feel like it falls into a trap that a lot of short novella mysteries do, and that it's difficult to create a mystery that you care about in that short space of time. It's difficult for to have antagonists who have the reveal of the villains or whatever, be characters that you care about or be characters that you even know. I'm gonna be honest, I could not keep, I only really kept track of the two main characters in this. There's a lot of other characters and when the reveal happened, I was like, I vaguely know who you are, but I don't necessarily, because when a book is this short, it's gonna be characters you've met once. Like who the f are you? It's gonna be characters you literally met in one scene. I, mean, I don't mean just in this one, I mean with any really short mystery novella. It's gonna be characters you met in one scene and like if you weren't paying close enough attention, you have forgotten them. <laughs> and so the mystery isn't the pro of it, but that's fine. I didn't really mind that. I loved their relationship. and I loved the world building and the discussions around climate change and the discussions about how we deal with climate change and the discussions around like conservationism, like, like how we take care of species and et cetera, et cetera. Like I think it was really, really interesting and I think this is a great setup for a series, a sci-fi mystery series to go on. So I am gonna continue the series. Guys, I have just done a sneaky little look and can I just say, so my goal this year is to have a net negative in terms of series. I don't know why I'm whispering. I was on 34 series, currently reading series at the start of the year this year. I'm currently on 34, which to me is amazing. I can't believe I'm doing so well. It's so exciting. I feel like, oh, I feel like I might actually reach that goal. All I've got to do is like, keep on track and finish one more series or DNF one, let's be honest. But <laughs> I think I am gonna try and finish a couple or get up to date with a couple. So anyways, um, yeah, I am going to do the series and I'd recommend it if you're looking for like a sci-fi Sherlock Holmes retelling. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, I'll see you tomorrow once reading another book. I think we're gonna read another one of the longer ones tomorrow. So either The Silver Sword or Split Tooth. So I've got some reading sprints also on my patrons tomorrow. So yeah, I think one of the longer ones would be good for tomorrow because some of my busier days are in the latter half of the week. So I'll see you tomorrow once I'm a bit of the ways through one of those. In this soft light, troubles fade away with you. No need for words to say your love. A gentle breeze that carries me through. I give up the world, the moon, the sky for you. I'd reach so high across the ocean, I'd so with pride for you, for you. I, I give up my dreams, my hopes, my view for you. What more could I ever do? I give up the world. The moon. Good evening, friends. I said I would try and check in earlier today. It's ten o'clock. <laughs> So I have failed. I finished Split Tooth by Tenet Gag. I made the executive decision when I was like 20 pages off halfway to not check in with you halfway, even though this is one of the longer books, because 
I feel like it was, I was just saying, it's gonna take me till the end to like fully form my thoughts. And I still don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this book justice to you. So all you should really know is that it's like part memoir, part fiction, part poetry, part prose about this young indigenous girl growing up, kind of an account of her childhood and adolescence and then falling pregnant. And this is by far one of the most unique books I have ever, 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 ever read. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it justice talking about it to you. I'm giving it four stars just because I don't, just because it wasn't five stars to me, but it's very special and I can see people who resonate with it more or, you know, understand it's set in Canada and understand like just different, um, cultural or like geographical nuances to things, um, giving it five stars. But yeah, it's a four star for me. Firstly, one of my patrons, Cade, saved me by helping me get the audiobook for this. So I listened to the audiobook from about 40 pages on the first 40 pages I read physically, but the rest listened to the audiobook and the author narrates it. And she is a throat singer. And so she does excerpts of throat singing in between each chapter or poem. And that was so special. And the way, I don't know, the way that this blended fiction and, and magic was really, really special. I thought that the issues that it tackled, it did so with such maturity and such wiseness beyond your year. Like, I don't know how anyone could ever become this wise. You know when you read from someone, like you, you know when you, you, you see someone and you just go like, holy shit, you are just like planes above in terms of the, the specialized understanding you have that you view the lens of the world, the, you, the lens that you view the world through, you know? There's some people who are so tuned in to the world through their lens that it's incredible. Like when so many of us just sleepwalk through the world, so many of us sleepwalk through the world without a lens, without a point of view, you know? When I watch, when I do my yoga with Adrian in the morning, I fucking love Adrian. I love yoga with Adrian. I love her and she is so, Clever isn't the right word, tuned in. So, so, it, uh, what's what I'm looking for? It's late. <laughs> so purposeful with every word, with every statement, with every movement, right? And it, this kind of reminded me of that. You know, the issues that it tackled, you know, around uh, growing up in these indigenous cultures and the harm that has been done to them and how that perpetuates a wrong, a lot, a lot, you know, through bloodlines was amazing. There were moments where, you know, it's written about her childhood and there were moments where some of the issues are kind of like written about through the corner of the eye, like as a child would kind of not want to recognize that for what it is, not kind of want to see that for what it is and just kind of like only half looking. It was kind of written like that, which I thought was super interesting. This is a very, this is a very special, unique book and I think that anyone you know, would be able to recognize its uniqueness. Really. I don't know if everyone would love it. I think it's very, very um, individual. And I can understand some people not resonating with it, but the audiobook for this is absolutely the way to go. I've struggled to find it anywhere in the UK. So you may struggle if you're in the UK. It used to be on Everand, but it's not at the moment. It may come back on at some point, but it wasn't today when I looked. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I fully understood it. I don't know if I fully got everything that this book was putting down and the layers of meaning and the layers of messages to it, but I still really enjoyed it. I still really enjoyed it. So yeah, um, tomorrow I'm going somewhere very exciting. I am going tomorrow guys to the book launch of The Examiner by Janice Hallett, which I kind of, I'm sad I haven't colored my edition in yet. Maybe I should color it in tomorrow. <laughs> I've got fucking makeup on it. <laughs> it's very obviously makeup-y. Um, yeah, I'm going to the book launch for this in London. I don't know how much of it I'll get to film. I am so excited, but I've decided I'm gonna pick up um, Arch Conspirator on the train journey because I've got about an hour's train journey into London either way. So I figured I'll be able to listen to the audiobook on the train journey there and back. But I am really excited. This is my first ever book launch, guys, and it's for one of my favorite authors. I feel so lucky. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know what to expect. Never been to a book launch. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and film a little bit of that, but I'm going to start Arch Conspirator. I may not get to speak to you until late. I imagine I'm gonna get home quite late tomorrow. So we'll see, either I'll check in with you tomorrow night or it may just have to be first thing the next morning depending on how um, exhausted I am. But I'm gonna start Arch Conspirator by Veronica Roth next. So I'll let you know what I think when I finished it.
Hello, it's the next day. I got in, so I got in, well, I got in so late. I got in at 11 o'clock, but I was exhausted <laughs> last night. But I did read on the train there and back, Arch Conspirator by Veronica Roth. I don't have a lot to say to you about this one. This may be quite the short chicken. Um, I don't really have any opinions. Why are the pages so filled with so many words? Like, what the fuck? I'm giving it three stars because I don't think it was bad. But this is basically an, an I, I'm saying her name wrong, but I can't say it right. Antigone, not Antagony. Or are both valid? Antigony? Antagony. Anyways, <laughs> retelling. And I have gone afterwards and looked up some of the myth and it really closely followed a lot of, a lot of plot beats from the original story, which is cool. But it's basically a dystopian version where like women have got forced insemination where you like take the genes or like the soul of other people and reincarnate them. So like you're not allowed to just like make babies. You gotta like, there's this whole thing cause like people are dying and the, the world is polluted. So it's sci-fi retelling. And I think there's some retellings where it's best that you know the original story and there's some retellings where it's best you don't know the original story. However, you're not really gonna know which retelling is before you go into it. This, you need to know the original story and like, well, you don't need to, but I think to enjoy it and to get value from it, you do because I think it's like, what it's, what it's, hoping you'll go is like wow that was so interesting how you like reimagined that original plot beat wow i loved how you put a spin on that like that's what this book is doing really to me it's not it's not doing anything particularly imaginative on its own it's just reimagining those plot beats and hoping you go whoa god you know so yeah i don't think i also think it had a lot of like sci-fi elements a lot of world world elements this is super short and it just didn't really like do any of them as in depth as i wanted to like we could have got more into the pollution side of it and the way that the, that's made the world be or we could have got more into like the women's rights and the women's role in the society and how that worked i just i was bored quite frankly I, there's nothing else to say to you i don't think the writing's bad like i've really enjoyed the stuff i've read from veronica roth so far that she's been putting out in more modern times but this one just felt like it was about an inside joke that I wasn't a part of that's really all I have to say to you I'm so sorry I'm now going to read another one that I really won't have a lot to say to you because I really don't want to spoil the rest of the series of this for you but I'm gonna read Saga volume three today so it's gonna probably only take me like 20 minutes to read so I'm gonna go ahead and read it now but yes I'm really excited to make progress in the series again it's like my one a year <laughs> that I read. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this now. And I reckon this series is like a solid four star for me usually. So we'll see what I think of this one. Empty chair across the table, it goes in the room. Shadows stands and bare walls, once with the melodies of you. I finished Saga Volume 3. This is the weekend to me. Friday, honey. Friday is a work day, <laughs> Jessica. I have my weekend on Friday. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give this four stars. It was fun. What the fuck can I say to you about this, though? What can I say to you? <laughs> I had fun. There's a fun sci-fi graphic novel in my past. So yeah, this is like the story of these two lovers who have a baby, but they're from like races or like species of people that shouldn't um, mix. And thus there's all these people chasing, chasing after them to try and kill them. And this felt like kind of a finale to the first act. It felt like it tied up a lot of holes with the first, not holes, like a lot of the storylines going on with the first two in the to first two volumes. And it seems like quite a lot of time is now gonna pass before volume four. But there was an introduction of some characters I really enjoyed in this. There was an introduction of some journalists that brought an interesting element to it. I really liked the setting that the family were in for a lot of this one. But I mean, yeah, these are just like fun sci-fi graphic novels. They're like super quick. They're, I mean, what can I say? <laughs> what can I say? I don't want to spoil anything. And I don't know, I don't, I don't have a lot of thoughts. If I'm honest with you, I just enjoyed it. <sighs> this is an arch conspirator. I'm really scraping the barrel. Okay, let me think of something. Let me think of something. I just like how it tied it all up. I don't know. <laughs> a profound silence has entered the chat. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like maybe I need to start reading these just not in videos because I never really, they're so like 
quick and they're so you're gonna get so this the story is still so connected right like there's certain series like lady hardcastle i can always give you opinions on that because they're like self-contained stories whereas this is very much like we are running on from everything that's happened in the previous in the previous uh volume so yeah i would recommend this if you're looking for quick sci-fi graphic novels but um i don't have a lot of thoughts to i'm gonna read the silver sword tomorrow i think we've got two days left and i think i'm gonna read the silver sword tomorrow and save goblins and great coats for sunday so that i can get this video finished for sunday <laughs> earlier so i think i'm gonna read the silver sword tomorrow so i'll see you then but i'm gonna have a nice evening i play pokemon and chillax and i'm gonna go make some nice pasta I'm really hungry. So I'm gonna go. Bye. Good evening, friends. It's been a day. It's been a day and I don't want to talk about it. Let's just talk about the book. I read The Horror of the Silver Sword by Ian Serellier and we are on a three book curse of me not having a lot to say, I feel like. I feel like these last three books, I'm just like, ah. I'm giving this three stars and it's not like, I don't have anything bad to say about this book. I don't have anything particularly good. I just didn't care. It's a children's book. It's a children's book. It's like beyond middle grade. It's like a children's book. And I don't know if I really cared. It's about these three siblings who have lost their parents in the chaos of war. And it's about them surviving and trying to make it back to their parents where they, they think they are in Switzerland now. So trying to find their way to them. It's a war book, but there's not a ton of war in it. Like, well, the effects of war are seen. So them starving or them struggling to stay alive and struggling to find each other. But there's not a lot of like horrors of war. They kind of exist independent of war. And like, I don't know how realistic that is like art oh, with it and excess independent of war is not the right thing there's no like violence of war there's the effects of it there's the starvation you know all those things i'm having to hide them encountering soldiers but there's not a lot of violence of war. as a kid's book right but it kind of makes it feel a little bit unreal to me i don't know but on the whole i think it's okay i think it's probably like for kids this is an important book to learn fictionally how what happened in the war right it's an important book like for them to relate to children their age and be able to see themselves and understand what children their age went through at this time so i think it's an important book but i don't know i don't really care agree you you cold-hearted bitch What'd you call me? You're a cold-hearted bitch. I don't really care about anything. I don't have anything to say. It's a three-star. It's a three-star. It's fine. I don't think I'm going to think about it much. I mean, for some people, this is probably like a really nostalgic, like, kids book. I thought the writing was okay, but I had to get... I found the audiobook on YouTube in the end to, like, get through it. Otherwise, I wasn't going to get through it. <laughs> I could have DNF'd quite happily. I just felt very disconnected from it and felt like I didn't really you know, care about the characters. It sounds like a very callous thing to say, you know? I don't know, I don't know. But as someone, you know, I've consumed a lot of World War II books in my time, as I'm sure many of us have, because like all historical fiction is World War II. Um, and I just didn't feel like I particularly connected to this one. That's all I really have to say, guys. I'm really sorry, that's very underwhelming. That's very underwhelming, but so was this book. <laughs> Hopefully, not going to be underwhelming is my final book, which is Goblins and Great Coats. Well, it's not even a book, it's a short story by Travis Bowerjee, which I'm gonna read tomorrow. I thought it was like 26 pages. Some of the good reasons we say it's 14. So this is gonna take me like 10 minutes to read, so I'll see you first thing in the morning with my thoughts. But it's Travis Bowerjee. I'm so excited I get to read more Travis Bowerjee. So that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. And then we'll have read the seven shortest books on my TBR in seven days. Quite the achievement and getting a little bit closer to that bugging reading goal of 150 bucks. <laughs> Good morning, beautiful human. So I have read Goblins and Great Coats, which let's be honest, this is 20 pages if we're being generous. <laughs> so I do have to contain what I say because I don't want to spoil anything, but I do have thoughts. I have thoughts. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this. So all you need to know is this little goblin who's a detective who goes, gets called to this inn to solve a murder that has happened, a locked room murder mystery. I'm giving this four stars. I enjoyed it but it has just made me yearn so deeply for a full length Travis Bowdery murder mystery. We need this, this is essential, this is a crisis. Like why would you tease me like this? Why would you tease me like this? Someone in my comments ages ago said, oh, I went to a Travis Bowdery talk and he said he's writing a murder mystery. I think this was it, but there's a part of delusion in my brain that until the next book is announced, this was just a test run for the full length murder mystery that he's about to publish. Yep, yep, 
yup, yup, yup. Because I, I just need more. I need more. It was so fun. It's 20 pages, so it's like solved in an instant. It's ridiculous. Like, it's cute. It's fun. The only reason it's not a five star is you meet a lot of characters instantaneously, and I could not track of who they were. The names. And also, they all fantasy names. And I'm just like, I don't even know. I, don't, I had no clue who any of their names were. One of them was like, I'm Bartholomew. I was like, okay, I remember your buff me. But then the other one was like, I'm this, this is this, this is this, this is this. But it didn't tell you when you're saying this is this, this is this, 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 who they're referring to in the group. <laughs> so I just found the cast of characters a little bit difficult to follow. But I really loved the storytelling in this. I loved the humour that it had a few really funny moments in it and like ridiculous moments. And Travis Bowdy just paints a beautiful, beautiful picture like the inn, in the rain, in the cold. This fantasy tavern was so vivid. He just does it. Oh, Travis, how I love you. <laughs> oh, Travis, how I love you. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it four stars. It was a fun, cute read. You can go get it. It's on like Subterranean Presses, I think. Uh, website for free so you can just download the ebook for free so I'd really recommend you go check it out but um yeah it's just like it takes 10 minutes to read it was fun it was cute it was ridiculous it was fantastical it was a bit more with Travis Bowdry reading I really I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed it but I don't feel like I can give it any more than a four star so besties we have read the seven shortest books on my TBR in this video I just when I did the math again I should have read a hundred books to be up to date at this point in the year on my <laughs> reading goal of 150 I have read because we're like 2,000 way through the year exactly Exactly. isn't that scary anyways um I have read 92 so now we're only eight books behind schedule it was 12 before so yeah. we're getting there and I've got a heck of a lot of reading to do over the next couple of weeks let me tell you for the videos I've got planned so I'm feeling better I'm feeling like we're catching up this video was good to kind of just like get us get us over the line a little bit but yeah let me know what you thought of any of these books that you enjoyed this one was definitely my favorite the brides of my hill high hill our first one but there are a few other really good ones in there as well so yeah let me know what you thought of any of the books I read in this video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!